Welcome to Shamba Shepa. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We meet families and enter their kitchens to explore how to cook in cleaner, faster, cheaper ways while at the same time increasing family nutrition. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice while also learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experience as they shape up their shambas on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. Today we are visiting a farmer in Kakamega. Near the famous crying stone. Legend has it that a man lost his wife and the grief made him so, so sad that he turned into stone. And the tears turned into a spring that flows from the top of the rock. That is in the past. In the present, the farmer we are visiting is a very happy farmer. Yes, and he has no problem finding a wife. In fact, he has two wives. Two wives. That will make somebody somewhere very, very happy. Don't yep. you think so, Tony? Let's go find out. Let's go. This week, we are visiting musician and farmer Disterio Naboayo. I've been farming for around 21 years. As Shamba Shepherd comes in my field, I feel so good because I will have all knowledge that I was lacking. And we are in Isongo, Kakamega, with some great advice for Disterio and his family. Disterio not only has two wives, he has grown up children as well. So there is no shortage of support building up the farm. Building up brick by brick, Tony. That's right. And today, helping the stereo are two of his sons, Calvin and Evans. The stereo. Yes, sir. Very nice to meet you. Thank you. Welcome. Yes. So, yes. Tony, who is who? Calvin. Uh -huh. There's Evans. Evans yeah. and Lucas. Yeah, yeah I've got a twin. I call the brother Lucas. He's my lovely brother. We are, we are born the same day. Yes. And you really look alike. This is very interesting. But you know what? Me and Tony are also twins. No. no, 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 no. I can see the difference with the nose. They don't look alike. <laughs> this one is bigger. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. All right. Very nice to be here. And I can see you are very, very busy mm -hmm. here. Yes. We are making some bricks. Is that the only thing that you do in the farm? No. What else do you do? I plant maize. Uh -huh. I also have dairy cow. Mm. I also rear ducks. Okay. Uh, for business. Wow. And uh, sometimes also plant trees. Mm -hmm. So, the stereo, I've, I've, I've seen you have uh, very nice looking cows there. How are they doing? I have so many problems uh, with these cows. Of course. Time of milking, you can get, there are some ticks. Mm. Also, we have uh, Mercedes sometimes. Yes. And when it is a trout, if you could have not enough uh, voters, mm. it is also a challenge. Okay, mm. food. The, uh, uh -huh. food. Okay. Oh, no. Between the two of you, who is mm. a better cook? This Me. one, he did the build it. Of just in the best. So, you know, okay. when, I'm <laughs> cool. when I'm left alone in the, in the bomber, yeah. yes. I really find it difficult to cook. I can just say like that. You or can you starve. go and eat bread? Or he go to the no. hotel and buy some two chapatis. Ah. In fact, he pays me to cook <laughs> yeah. The ah. kitchen is very big. You know, when you enter the kitchen, you want to cook, and you say like, oh. No, no, it's too much work. Just, yeah. Too much work. 20, they will just go and eat something somewhere. <laughs> I impressive. think there is something that we can do for mm -hmm. you to make your mm -hmm. cooking even more comfortable. Actually, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. Yes. But for yes. now, you will have to give us time. Yes. We need to pitch our tent and get straight to work. Okay, All right? You. We'll see you we'll later. We'll see you later. All right? Okay, okay. 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 Bye-bye. Continue okay. your job. Yeah, Thank you. All right. Yes. So, let's pitch the tent. And get ready for work. My first job is to help with soil fertility. Part of this stereo's farm is on a slope, and when it rains, topsoil is washed away. Soil erosion harms soil fertility and leads to less yields. We've invited Isaac Ogutu to see how he can help. He's representing SIAT, the International Center for Tropical Agriculture. This cereal. Yes. What have you been planting on this particular piece? I was planting here napier grass. Did it have any problems? Yes. It is not growing, it's changing color. Mm -hmm. So that's why 
were decided to approve. The, the farm is loppy yes. and also the grass that is on the farm is having a disease we call Napier stand disease. Mm -hmm. This is a disease that makes Napier grass not to grow but remain standard and become yellow. What, what can he do? We recommend farmers to plant Bracaria. Cayman will be ideal for the stereo mm. because it has a good root system that is able to hold the soil. It will be able to help you stop erosion. Yes. Another thing, you are going to get more grasses from your farm because the grass does well and it uh, withstands uh, diseases. Yes. Isaac suggests planting Bracaria. The mulatto too, Cayman and Cobra varieties are all good choices. So is Panicum grass. All these varieties have deep roots that can hold the soil. But Mulato too is also resistant to stunt disease, which affects Napier in this area. If the farm is sloping down, yes. you plant across, mm -hmm. so that when water is moving, it gets something to stop it. Mm -hmm. To be able to do this, yeah. we show farmers how to locate contours mm -hmm. on their slopes. What, what exactly is that? Contours are level lines uh, mm -hmm. uh, on a slope. And those are the lines that we follow uh -huh. when we are planting our grasses. To be able to know uh, where those lines uh, follow, mm. we use an A-frame. A contour is a line across a sloping field all at the same height. You can use it to plant crops evenly across a sloppy field or to make terraces. To find this level land, you need to build an A-frame. To do this, you need two poles for the side, each two meters long and a center pole one and a half meters wide. Fix them together to form an A shape. Next, you need to tie a string at the top of the frame with a weight like a stone at the bottom. Cut a mark to show the middle of the frame. This mark will help line up the string and show the frame is level. Right now, our A frame is made. Let's see how we can use it to find the contour. This is the point mm -hmm. where we want to start making our line okay. uh, from. So, first thing uh, mm -hmm. is to mark where our line is going to start from. Mm -hmm. yes. Mark the starting point with a stick, then move the A-frame and find the level land. Do this by moving the end of the frame until the red center line meets the mark in the middle of the frame. Once they line up, Mark the end of the frame with another stick and repeat all the way across the field. Once this is done, we are ready to plant the Bracaria. So we will need the splits, then we will need a rope to help us have straight lines. Mm -hmm. okay. Remember, when you plant with the manure, the grass thrives better. So, so what uh, do we, we do take first? Our rope, uh -huh. You put it here. here first. The next one, you will take it to the last stick. Uh -huh. Now we make our holes. Our holes are going to be 30 centimeters apart. Large. You take a handful of manure, manure yes. for every hole. For every hole. Okay. Okay. So when planting the splits, you put a hole split in one hole. Okay. okay. Put in here and press. Eh? Mm -hmm. okay. This is mine. And you press. And press. Mm. When you plant and then you put some water, you are, they are going to pick very fast compared to seeds because mm -hmm. it has already established roots. After a few days, yes. it is going to cover the entire area, mm -hmm. so there will be no gap in uh, between. In between. It's gonna look good. Looks nice. It's gonna look good. When planting crops such as maize on a slope, the distance between the lines of Bracaria is very important. The steeper the slope, the closer the lines of Bracaria need to be to stop erosion taking place. So, for a gentle slope, the main crop should have lines of grass 10 to 20 meters apart. But for a steep slope, the main crop should have the lines of grass closer together, 5 to 10 meters apart. That's it. All done. Good work, Isaac. We feel so good because now I know how it will control the soil erosion. Ah, I see the stereos farmers group is here. What is this I'm hearing? It sounds like they're sharing some serious myths about crop insurance. I better get Joseph, our insurance expert from Eka Africa, to clarify matters. Hello, farmers. Yes. Thank you. Ah, the stereo. Yes. What is it that farmers don't like about insurance? Most of farmers don't like insurance because 
It is a new thing in their minds. We have not met or seen any calamities in, the, in our area being uh, paid back to the farmers. So they have got a lot of doubt. I have heard that you should only insure when you know that the weather is going to be very bad. Is, is, is that the way it should be? No, no, no. We have seen so many farmers coming to look for insurance or product when your crop has been hit, like your crop is suffering from a drought. It doesn't work like that. When you're planning to plant at the beginning of the season, that is the time you're supposed to buy an insurance product because insurance covers you for what you can prevent, okay? Mm -hmm. But not for foreseen risks. Dorothy, what was this you were saying about paying out? Insurance doesn't pay out? If, if in case I've insure, insured my, crop. uh, my crops, mm -hmm. how can I be sure that you will pay me back? Mm -hmm. I, if, are you not calling me? <laughs> I hope you know how NHIF works, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or any medical insurance that we take for our families and uh, you know what happens. You take, you buy that insurance product Mm -hmm. But then uh, when you fall ill, you go to the hospital and uh, you get treated. Mm -hmm. And it is NHF that pays for that, right? Yes. So same case applies to agriculture insurance. Yes. You buy an insurance product for your crops and then you'll be covered uh, during the cropping period. Then when your crop is hit or it is damaged by some of the risks that we are going to discuss today, mm -hmm. then you'll be paid at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. And it works. In 2018, insurance companies have paid more than 0.8 billion uh, to farmers who are affected. Remember, 2018 we had a bad season and most farmers were paid. So it works and farmers get paid. Good, good. Vincent, yes. ask you a question. We just hear that the, the big uh, farm, farmers are the ones who are insured. Mm -hmm. But what about the small scale uh, farmers? Uh, there are two different uh, insurance products that we have. Yes. There's one product that covers you for drought and excessive rainfall. We call that insurance product rainfall index insurance. Rainfall can come in excess yes. or it can, you can experience drought. So at the end of the season, we will be able to establish how much rainfall your crop received. If it came in excess and caused damage to your crop, we'll be able to capture that using satellite. If you experienced the drought and your crop was damaged, we'll be able to see that and pay you at the end of the season. The rainfall index insurance sounds simple and affordable for smallholder farmers. The insurers assess damage using satellite images. What else do they offer? The other product that we have is called multi-peril crop insurance. So this product covers you for a, a wide range of risks, like uncontrollable pests and diseases if you are having locusts, fall armyworm. Then it also covers you for drought, again, like rainfall index, and then excessive rainfall. Sometimes your crop can be damaged by flooding. It's best suited for large-scale farmers because of the cost of coming to visit your farms. Understood. Because someone has to come and visit your farm to assess the damage, the multi-peril crop insurance is a little more costly. So finally, Joseph, yes. why should farmers insure their crops? We insure our crops because we are not too sure how the season is going to unfold. You may be having rains today, but one month down the line, we don't have the rains, right? Yes. You can even insure one bag of seed, which goes for around 500 shillings. Let's see how it works. Wow! At a cost of just 50 shillings, you can insure as low as a value of one bag of maize seed. Once you have dialed the short code, you'll be taken to a USSD menu. Dial 2 to select Bima Pima Insurance for the Rainfall Index Insurance. Respond to all queries, including crop you want to insure, how much you can spend to protect a certain amount of loss, and your planting date. Finally, confirm your payment using your mobile money. Before, we didn't know that there is uh, insurance in farm inputs. We only know that there is insurance for car and uh, sick uh, people. But now we feel so good as we are trained by Shamba Shepa. Coming up after the break. Preventing mastitis. And cooking with the electric pressure cooker. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. We are in Kakamega and we are visiting farmer Disterio Naboyo. We've seen how to stop soil erosion and how to get insurance. But we also want to find out about preventing mastitis and the electric pressure cooker. No time to waste. Let's get back to work.
Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. In the coming week, we expect less rain across most parts of Kenya. Northern, northeastern, eastern, lower eastern Kenya and coastal regions will have no or little rainfall of less than 5 mm. This includes Turkana, Marsabit, Samburu, Isiolo, Mandera, Wajia, Garissa, Tana River, Lamu, Kilifi, Mombasa and Kwale. The same is expected for southern parts of Kenya, including Taita Taveta, Kajiado, running into Makueni and Kitui. The majority of central Kenya, Mount Kenya regions and neighboring counties, including Embu and Kirinyaga, Tarakanithi, Meru, Laikipia and Nyeri, expect little rain of between 0 and 5 millimeters. The same goes for Kiambu, Moranga, Nairobi and Machakos. Central Rift and South Rift Valley, Transoya, Wasingishu, Nandi, Nakuru, Narok, Kericho, and Bomet expect rains of 25 to 50 millimeters to continue. Western and Nyanza regions also expect rains of 15 to 50 millimeters. Counties included are Bungoma, Kakamega, Siaya, Vihiga, Kisumu, Homabay, Migori, Kisi, and Nyamira. Farmers, here are some tips. As the rains get less, it's important that you mulch your crops to keep them moist. Also, keep weeding your shamba to stop weeds competing with your crops for water and nutrients. For more tips, get in touch with iShamba on 0711-082-606. See you next week on the Shamba Shape Up Farming News. Now, let's see how I can help these Tyrios young sons. They are harvesting some arrowroots ready to cook for lunch. They are busy young men. Evans is studying to become a chef, while Calvin is an actor. They both work on the farm in their spare time. Finding time to cook is a real problem. Getting firewood and controlling the flames is a lot of work. And when the wood is damp, it gets smoky too. <sighs> Let's see how our expert Dorothy Otieno from Nyalore Impact can help. She's brought an electric pressure cooker. Could this be the answer to our young men's difficulties? So, Calvin and Evans, yeah. what was happening in there? Oh no, we are cooking there and the smoke was all over. I can even smell the smoke on yeah, you. Yeah, when, when, <laughs> when you pass someone, you are just smelling smoke uh -huh. just because of that firewood. And you know, in this age, maybe, you know, if you start yeah, smelling when smoke, you smell the smoke girls will run away. To pass near someone. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, to begin with you, yeah. Evans, what difficulties have you been facing? You are from school, you let the, maybe the files are wet, and you have to study, and it, you have also to sleep, mm -hmm. to rest, mm -hmm. so that you can wake up early, go back to school. It wastes a lot of it time. It wastes a lot of time. I'm so sorry that yeah. you have to go through all this trouble, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, you can imagine what your own mother has been going through all these years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is very encouraging to see young men like you who mm. are in college and helping in the farm, Sure. This is a gadget that is going to make you even love cooking more. Oh, okay. And you're going to be able to save so much time, mm. to, ab to be able to concentrate in your studies, and you cook what you like in the time that you want it, in the style that you want it at any time, mm. hot food guaranteed. Yeah, hot food, sure. I can see we have arrowroots here yes. and sweet potatoes. You want to say the sweet potatoes and arrowroots are going to be ready and waiting hot? After it has finished cooking, it will automatically take itself to the warm mode. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So your food will be hot oh. by the time you wake up in the wow. morning and you want to eat it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is what you have brought from the farm and I will show you how to prepare it in the cleanest way, the cheapest way, in the fastest way yeah. and you'll always be assured of hot sweet potatoes anytime let's get cooking we will use the measuring cup to put our water in the pan put sweet potato also add the arrow roots we want to pressurize the sweet potato and the arrow roots so we are going to pick on meat because meat will boil at the same time with the arrow roots and the sweet potato. So it will cook and once it is ready, it will stop cooking and automatically take itself to 
warm. So we can actually go and do something else as the food cooks? Yes, we can actually now go and do something else as the boys go to the shamba. Mm -hmm. And when we come back, the food will be ready and hot. Wow. Yes. Let's do exactly that. Well, this is great. We can carry on working as the food cooks. But will it be ready and warm when we return? Stay with us to find out. While the food is cooking away, we have invited Victor from Coopers to help Disterio boost his milk production. Disterio has mentioned several problems. Let's focus on preventing mastitis today. Victor! Yes, Tony. How are you? I'm fine, sir. Good to see you here. Thank you, thank you. Okay, Disterio. Yes. How many liters of milk are you getting from your cows? Uh, from the beginning, I caught uh, 10 liters, and uh, this one, I caught three. But right now, I'm getting only one liter, and the, the other one, same. One liter? Yes. What is the potential of this cow? I'm seeing around 15 liters. 15 liters? Yeah. Wow. Good feet. Yeah. And of course, everything else good. It's 15. One day, I found solid ladder with the Mercedes. Oh. Yes. Uh -huh. I don't know where it came from. Even to control, I don't know how to control it. So, so Victor, mastitis. what is mastitis? This is a bacterial disease. The symptoms can be, number one, you can see the reddening of the udder, the swelling of the udder, and also the coagulated milk. It's got that lumps? Means, lumping. Yeah, some lump. Should the farmer drink that kind of milk? No, it is unsafe for yes. human consumption at least. How does it affect the cow? The cow will lose appetite, yes. it will drop in terms of production, yes. and also uh, the general health of the cow will deteriorate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Disterio, what did you do when you noticed that your cow had mastitis? So, I decided to call the veterinarian to come and look at the, the cow. Yes. So, he came and he treated the cow. And does the cow recover fully? Yeah. After t full treatment, the cow will recover fully, but... Mm. Precautions have to be taken to avoid reinfection. Aha, uh -huh. so the best cure here is prevention. Prevention. Ah, I can see you coming for milking. Let us go in. Okay, let's Wonderful. go in. Yes. Calvin has come to help his dad milk the cows, just at the right moment to learn how the stereo and the family can stop their cows from getting mastitis in the future. So Calvin, yeah. I can see you are ready to milk. Yeah, yeah. What do you have here? I've got a uh, warm water with a clean towel. I want to warm the bladder before I start milking. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Are your hands clean? Yeah, my hands are very clean. So Victor, no. what should the farmer have before they start milking? Let me show you. Okay. Here we have water. This is hot water and of course a clean towel. So you wipe the udder. You need to ensure that there is no dirt within the teeth area before you apply the milking salve. This is CKL milking salve. And uh, you need to apply the teeth softly. Stripping the teeth one by one just to ensure that there is no clotted milk in all the teeth. You can use your hand. You can see the milk is good. Yeah. There is no clots. Yeah. So after that, you continue with the milking process, which yes. is normal. And then later, after finishing up, you clean up the udder to ensure that there is no bacterial infection that you've left it here. And then we have the mastite. This is CKL mastite, which is udder wash to prevent mastitis. Because this is two cows, you can use 5 ml. You mix with 2 liters of water. And then you just dip into each teeth. You, you ensure that it is fully a mass. My cow had mastitis. He showed me how to use milking salve. He taught me how to put the teeth inside the teeth dip. And I know my cow is not going to be sick again. Now that you have made sure this cow won't get mastitis again, let's see what other advice Victor has. Best bring in Karis. First of all, make a footpath. The footpath is very important to prevent bacterial infection into entering into your dairy unit. Then we put disinfected water. You can use copper sulfate in that case. And that is there, right there at yeah, the door. Yeah, yeah, right there, 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 that is there. The sleeping area needs to be smooth 
at least you should put some sawdust to make sure that the cow is comfortable enough. Right. You also need to check on the slope of the dairy unit. In between the sleeping area and the milking area or the feeding area. So that the slurry and all the water can flow. Easily flow ah, by okay. gravity. Yes. So the milking parlor should be separate from the feeding area. Ah. There should be clean water trough. It should be well accessible to the cows. A final check from Victor to see if the shed is up to good standards. He looks impressed. Well done, Carice and team. The cow shed really has been shaped up. When Shamba Shep Up will come next time, I will have more milk than I was uh, getting right now. The moment we've been waiting for. Time to check on the cooking. So I don't know whether it's ready now. It was ready like in 30 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. And now we are ready to serve. And you can see it has easily opened. Wow. And it smells good. Yeah, I'm salivating. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tamu? <laughs> and it is hot. You see it's even burning you. Mm -hmm. Do you like it? Yeah, of course. Let me taste this one, please. Mm. That, does it taste like the normal... It's better than that one. It is better than that one. Yeah, yeah. It has no smell of smoke. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm going to encourage my fellow youths that there is a very clean way to cook food without wasting energy, wasting time, money, by use of an electrical pressure cooker. Mm. And okay, it's actually safe cutting off of trees mm -hmm. for firewood. Uh -huh. So we say yes for electric pressure cooker. I've come to learn the small farm, it can do anything as the big shamba can do. I would like Shamba Shepherd to visit me again and again and again. And that's all we have time for this week. Join us again next week for another episode of Shamba, shamba Shepherd. Shepherd.